Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tia Boo and I am here for episode 24 of Mobile Suit Double Zeta Gundam. Last time on Double Zeta Gundam, we had a hell of an episode. We had Puru getting brainwashed. We had a big, pretty cohesive mission with everybody kind of on the same page, leading to an insane shootout in Earth's atmosphere as a bunch of people were descending on Dakar to bring back the past and I guess invade Earth or something. Not sure. Either way, we've ended up with Judo, with Pudu on his back, descending to Earth in order to save her after she got knocked out of atmosphere or uh, orbit or whatever by stray shots from Glemmy Toto fired at Judo, which he dodged that hit her instead. Slightly contrived, but I don't care. It was awesome. And now, I guess, maybe the two of us are going to end up on Kukuru's Doan's Island and learn Mobile Suit Martial Arts together? I don't know. I don't know what the heck we're going to do. Maybe this will be an opportunity to shake Puru's brainwashing a little bit more. Maybe not. Maybe in the meantime, Hamana's going to be able to take over the fucking planet. I don't know. But I'm excited to see what happens as we transition from space side to Earth side. Because every time that Gundam has brought us down to Earth, it gets pretty up in the clouds, if you know what I mean. It gets pretty insane. So, here we go. Battlefield Earth, episode 24 of Mobile Suit Double Zeta Gundam. Let's see where we pick up um, and what sort of state our characters are in as we arrive onto the scene on planet Earth where most of us have never been before. Also, there were some communications from Karaba, so maybe we'll see some familiar faces? I don't know. Seems like an opportunity. In any case, episode 24 of ZZ Gundam is up and ready to go, and I'm ready for it. Two versions, picture in picture, in the description. Timer on YouTube. Beep beep timer to count us down. Let's get into it. Ah, I thought we were going to see the really cool spin out shot from there. <clears throat> it was a pretty real fight. <laughs> okay, we're on Earth. Sibling love blooms in the southern seas. Hot? Maybe not a good idea, guys. Maybe no banging between siblings. I just came off from a cross. No incest. Okay, so warships just parked outside your city. Cool. Cool. Oh, they just took over. They just did it. They just took the car. It's been taken. Shit. And we are going to do what? It looks like we're actually kind of all arriving together.
Dope. Dope. Yeah, the real world. Real world. Ah. Each episode, please, please. I would, I would love to see Ruruka in the bathing suit. What? What? After this, the argument will never rise to space again. What? Hey, Peru, are you gonna kill me or be my friend? Oh boy. Sister! Okay. Not bad. Fuck. Just attack them. No need for organization. Um. Doo doo. God damn it. Ah, just a test, huh? Yeah, this is a cool suit. Oh my god. Suddenly we're getting torped. No beach episode, huh? Damn it, guys. Oh, they're aboard now. How did that... They're just aboard now. Is Peru aboard? What happened? Whoa! My guy's doing backflips and shooting missiles at us. Stop that. <laughs> Cut that shit out, bro. Hmm, built for this terrain. What a crazy suit. Oh my god. What a crispy uh, drawing of Ruruka. That was beautiful. I mean, she's beautiful, but that was beautiful. Hmm. Beach episode. <laughs> we'll follow the weird boat. Could be a trap, though. All right. Taman. Oh. <laughs> you in particular are not allowed. Yay. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Oh. Do not separate us. She's gonna sneak the fuck out. What? That was a dark sayonara. Alright, thanks. Bye. Oh. Gravity. Oh. 
He's sneaking too. Okay, so he didn't see him. I thought he was just covering. And now it's a rainstorm. Oh, he did see him. Uh, uh. This guy's kind of kind of like us on uh on Shangri-La. Pretty pretty familiar. He's totally going to betray us. Kids totally going to betray us, right? Oh, she fucking... <laughs> but I can... F I know it. We're setting up that vent, too. We're definitely setting that vent up. Sure. I'll home you in. I mean, he's not far off. Hey. Just gather a harem, bud. <laughs> hey, you look kind of like my sister. Come join my plane. Yikes. Hmm. Hmm. Reminiscent of Lena, too. Brother, don't go do anything weird. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Beach episode? We gotta go out. <laughs> Here, just let me have the controls of the plane. Oh, this way. What? <laughs> oh my god, Pudu! Yoinked. Yoinked. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoops. But which Pudu? <laughs> I love you, Judo, or I kill you, Judo. Or is she gonna jump in and see him sitting with Anu and freak the fuck out? You're not his sister! <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> mm. Ah, danger. Yeah, they've been... Oh! They're actually going to be fighting for the Neozeons or something, aren't they? Uh-oh. Jack it on, bud. Whoa, that just got so complicated. And it, it gives us such an echo, uh, a ripple effect of the war on, like, uninvolved parties. Super cool. Man, I feel a tragedy brewing. What are we going to stumble upon? A full operation? Oh, this is where those are. Wow, and we've been betrayed. Uh. Hmm. 
And now you're the one driving. Uh... <laughs> I'm just going to send out a Zaku. Oh, shit. Mmm. Mmm. Doesn't understand it yet. Yeah, you lied. Oh, baby. Welcome to Earth, kid. I grew up in gravity. And on a punch. Fuck. Damn, dude. Join the war machine. She's going to sense him underground in the cove. Uh, nope. Okay, it's Anu. And also probably Plu reaching out. Look, I'm a primo pilot. <laughs> I'm out. What did she just see? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think everything's fine. Judo, hi! Okay. <laughs> no. Mine. <laughs> What the fuck just ha- <laughs> What the fuck just- Hippity ho! Just breaking all the hearts. Yes. <laughs> yes, Peru. Ah, uh, and down below the waves they lurk. Cool, this has got a lot of interconnected parts. I wanna toast them. Just reeling him back in. Is he trying to get away? It's a good idea. But he's in that, like, beach realm of just betray anybody. Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> Found him. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Everything's great. Yeah, but we got the whole squad here. We can henshin, right? Oh, okay. L given the orders. I kind of like it. Oh, we are gonna. Sweet. Oh, they can detach. Yeah, yeah. Later. So many moving pieces. <laughs> but it's space proof. It should be fine. That's nah, fine. <laughs> ah, shit. <laughs> Ah, uh, how inconvenient. Okay, they lurking. Let's go. Maybe that'll alert them. Nice. Foiled. Oof. Mm. 
in atmosphere. Sick. Hi, guys. Dude, he just doesn't want to kill you, Taman. No, don't fire on... Taman! Taman, I know your sister. I don't want to murder you. Trust me, that's not what matters. <laughs> Have you seen the size of the gun? Do you see that fucking thing? Oh! Well, that didn't work. At all. Shit. <gasps> later. Oh. Other kind of later. Stop fighting for these fucking guys. He says, a civilian fighting along the, aboard the Argo. Hmm. Oh! Getting to do all the laser battle stuff underwater is so crazy. <laughs> Hi. Dude. It's like he's talking to his former self, though. That really is what it's like. Get the fuck out of here. Huh. That's cool. Oh, I've gotten got? No. Well, now you've got a now you've got a dank ass mobile suit. Go for it, Tomon. Please don't get killed. He's going to go get himself killed. I don't know, man. Maybe we should take all the suits first. No? Oh, okay. Okay. Ghost ride the whip. <laughs> Yay? <laughs> it was a budding rebellion. We could have had a full revolution. Okay. Good job. Back to peaceful, peaceful island civilization. Okay, cool. I guess war is defeated. All right, kid. What a swimmer. And we reunite a, a family. So it's the other kind of sibling love blooming, huh? Okay. This is a pretty cool story. We'll cut it. We'll cut it there. Yeah. We'll cut it there. That was a pretty cool story. A pretty cool Earth narrative. And to my mind, a through a through a scanner darkly mirror of Judo and Lena. It's like Judo now shows up on Shangri-La and runs into a couple of kids 
doing some crazy operations around some insane war stuff that happens to be going on. They're trying to profit off of it and getting themselves involved in insanity. And you've got this pretty reasonably headed sister who's like big brother stop going out into the into the death place where you might die and shit that sucks i don't want you to be doing this and he's like i got this i'm i'm invincible i'm i'm judo i'm tom on i'm i'm the guy i'm gonna you know i'm gonna pull the wool over everybody else's eyes i'm gonna be the one playing all the you know pulling all the strings playing all the cards and not realizing that he's getting taken by the house every time right like not realizing that in his own quest to find some way to manipulate other people, they're actually looking for ways to manipulate him and turn him and his easy goal money into something that they can use and turn into a weapon. There's some pretty, some pretty, um, like, how do I put it? It's not that they're hypocritical exactly. There are uh, some moments in the episode where characters don't realize how on the nose their statements are and how they reflect upon themselves. There's this moment where where Judo is like, oh, "You you fuckers using civil relying on civilians to get your dirty work done." And for like 20 episodes, he and the squad have been child uh, uh, conscriptions basically who have joined up and are civilians being <laughs> being used by the Arkema to get their dirty work done. So there are all these things that end up reflecting on our characters and it brings us back to that that sort of idea that the show is giving us these shadows and these flashes of insight into the whole landscape of the conflict and the whole landscape of the characters' internal worlds and their interrelationships with each other ends up being really fucking cool we we see these like sonar pulses of um ideas from the character specifically from judo in this episode that demonstrate change within him because his his mindset is dramatically different having lost lena for this period of time having gone through what he's gone through having come to the conclusions and ideas that he's coming to he's starting to put them out into words and he's he's forced to by these enemies or situations that he comes across he's forced to put them into words and forced to like make those ideas that he's coming to cohesive and and state them and they become statements of character from judo right statements that fly in the face of who he was 15 episodes ago because he was taman in a lot of ways he was that guy who's like haha we're out we're gonna go profit let's go he was and taman is kind of in that same mondo beach realm where he's like yeah it doesn't matter who who we're fucking over as long as we're coming out in the green at the end and we're alive who cares right will betray anybody doesn't matter and taman goes through has like three betrayals over the course of this episode because he's already working with the with the Zeons, right? So then he betrays them by b betrays them by talking to the Argama. But really, what he's doing is leading the Argama and betraying the Argama and bringing them in. And then finally, he betrays all that and explodes the whole base and all that shit. He's he's chaos, right? Judah runs into it with his new experiences and sees what's going on and sees the impact that it's having within the family and sees Lena in Anu, sees all these things and and feels it and has to state it and that. That force to state it, that putting him in opposition with other ideologies, other ideas, the ideas that are in Taman's head, the ideas that are in the Xeon guy's heads, whatever they are, forcing Judo to relate to those and interact with them forces him to state his premise and his thesis. And so the argument that is the battle in the Super Eye Patch Wolf, what makes a fight scene interesting, the battle has to be about something. There has to be a, an argument going on, some kind of idea against some other kind of idea. And now we get Judo sort of stating that idea and it's coming together in a really, a really powerful and cohesive and interesting way that it kind of hasn't been before, which is pretty fucking cool. Let's run through the episode. It's really good looking all the way through. It's pretty crispy. Um, God, it's something that I just don't note about ZZ Gundam enough is how fucking good everything looks. It looks so good all the damn time. I really believe so much of it. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I just came off of a really well animated episode of Macross that was like spectacular for a Macross episode. Really cool. A lot of crazy stuff. And while the peaks of that episode are, are maybe higher than the peaks of this episode, I come into Gundam and it's like, oh yeah, I'm just used to the fact that all these characters are totally on model basically all the time. And the spaces that they're in make 
sense to me and read to me and the mechs look fucking cool and real and the suits and the shading and the crispness of the colors and the the cell painting it's all so fucking good in Gundam so I just have to note it because it sort of washes away you sort of just fall into it you're like oh this is just the way that it is in Gundam and the way that it is in Gundam is amazing it's really amazing the way that fucking everything looks not to mention continuously cool mobile suits and designs and mechas and shit. Fascinating, like, cut-ins all across this episode. It's full of these cool cut-ins of characters as they, they hop in. This one angled in as, as at his angle as he's charging the Argama, right? And then this suit, freaking Blasto. I don't think we've seen this one before. I, th I don't think so. But man, what a cool set of cuts. Boom, getting torpedoed and suddenly chaos. Awesome. burgers go flying and speaking of flying dude is literally styling on us guy is 360 no scoping no no scope triple shot rocket blasting us which by the way these look awesome the trails that come off of them create so much space as he's like cascading back and firing forward it's rad it's rad i like it i like the look of it and off L goes to take it down. Pew, don't you can't take a localized mobile suit lightly. This is my territory. Skips off into the wild blue yonder. Fucking great. I gotta comment on this. I gotta mention this. Somebody decided to to do it a fucking top tier art project on Ruruka throughout here. The edge lighting on her hair is so crispy, and the the cuts of her her, her hair outlines and the little, little shirt thing. She just looks hot. She just looks hot looks awesome i really think she looks beautiful here a little she's got a collar that shows cleavage who designed that somebody needs a medal somebody deserves a medal because you can have like professional business business casual professional with the collar and still show the taters they had they had some good ideas <laughs> they had some good ideas why didn't that take off that needs to be everywhere. And into our primary plot line for the episode. Business is on. And it's just like looking in a mirror. It's just like looking in a mirror. And he's fucking with them the whole time, just like they would be. There's also, it sets up this um, disdain that Earthnoids have for space noids that I think is really important for us to, to point at and note. Haha, you, all you space noids are so weak. And then they're treating the Zeons pretty shitty because they're like, haha, you guys don't know how to fucking water. You don't know how to gravity. You suck. Pretty interesting that there's that level of tension there. And then Judo skips town and Taman lets him on. Well, you jump ship to get away, so I understand how you feel. And this gives us the insight to know what's going on on Earth, and it gives Judo the moment to see what's happening from a different perspective in a totally new way. They're just fighting for territory, so I'm going to use the war to get ahead. And Judo is impressed by it, genuinely, because it's, again, it's like seeing a... <sighs> seeing an ambitious version of himself. It really is. And competent and, you know, guiding his ship and all that jazz. It's pretty cool. Judo? Judo isn't on this ship anymore. Judo hasn't been here for years. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about, Padu? Uh, man, there's some moments of like, oh, is it about to, to get romantic between these two characters? It's not that the, that the facial expressions are difficult to, well, it's not that they're mistaken or in any way it's just that i failed at reading them because i'm I've, I've got my own tism <laughs> i've got my own problems with that uh but we get this immediate connection between these characters this like echo of lena whose pleas don't fall on deaf ears when it comes to judo taman doesn't hear it it's okay if we're poor just don't go and do anything with the war it's just like lena when you get all these really like solid close-ups, it does feel like a bond, a bonding moment. It could feel like a Disney, like kids bonding. Yeah, I'm a friend. Oh, I'm a friend too. You just they sort of smile at each other and like, I guess we're friends now. And that's sort of how it works in in kids cartoons. They do, that little smile is what that means. I guess that's probably the realm that we're working at because that little smile in in adult cartoons means it's 
it's getting on time. <laughs> um, um, so I guess I got, I got mistaken by it, but not, not really. Judo, Judo, he really is picking up a full harem of sisters, though. Uh, he's gonna have one in every continent by the time we leave Earth. And away Puru goes to go find her brother. Alright, and out we go to do some missions and find out that they're totally betraying. Talk it out, and he gets absolutely whomped by this kid. Taman, Taman just kicks his fucking ass. One to the solar plexus, and Judo is <laughs> folded. And so the war effort goes on, and they're going to sink the Argama. Three little sisters now. He's Again, he's just collecting them. Three little sisters. It's Anu talking to him. It's Puru seeking him mentally. And it's his own mind hallucinating Lena. <laughs> Three sisters. Just a full squadron of all the all the 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 judo loving little sisters. That's the real danger that Haman Karn has to worry about. Is if she ever manages to off judo, the sister squad is going to come after her, <laughs> cause some real problems. And they treat him like shit all the way through. Ah, stupid kid, maintain your depth. And then, bam! With Peru, uh, everything goes to hell. And we get to fight underwater, which is like, this is cool. Because we've done it a little bit before, but we've never done it quite like this. With these laser blasts just causing insane, like, instant boiling and, and cavitation under the surface. Fucking rad. Or sweeping the, the beam across to create a giant bubble cloud in order to, to smokescreen yourself. Fucking rad. And then on the other side of it, shooting down deserters. And realizing for Taman that maybe he's not on the right side of things, and maybe these aren't the good guys, and maybe my whole idea of just getting money wherever I can get it makes me really easy to manipulate. Oh shit, if, I, if my goals are super simplistic and I don't care who's paying me, I can get wrapped up in all kinds of bad shit. Yeah, man. Also... Judo appearing behind you as you scream for your dead comrades and leveling the double mega cannon at your fucking, the back of your robot's skull? Hello. <gasps> that. That is a top tier Gundam cut in face right there. <gasps> yup. <laughs> Gone. No pilot, that's a kid. And he's still on the anger thing until Judo cuts through it and communicates. And then he realizes, Ugh. Oh shit. This guy's for real. Who's gonna be crying? Have you thought about that, Taman? Who's gonna be crying for you when you die? Huh? Huh? Don't you get it, man? This shit sucks. He says, you're like this because you depend on others. If you do everything in your power to rely on yourself, other people won't be able to use you. And honestly, I gotta say, I feel a little bit like Peru's face here as he says this. I'm like, I don't know about that, man. Considering what we've done for the last 25 episodes is build up the reliability of your squad of friends and companions and support mechanisms and, and systems around you that aren't about using you, but are about like like equivalent exchange and some degree of mutualism there and friendship and collaboration and stuff. So I don't fully agree with Judo's whole take here that it has to do with depending on yourself, but I do agree with the idea that he's getting at that if you're just driven by these simplistic desires and willing to work for anybody, they're going to manipulate you. And if you can rely upon yourself or those... I'd say rely on yourself or maybe your family or those that you trust or the, the people you care about or whatever. If you can rely on each other, because that's the element that's missing from his speech. But I know that it's in the it's in the idea of the show. It's not missing. It just makes it just if I if I were to analyze this in isolation, I could get pissed about it. But I, I'm not going to analyze it in isolation because I know that's not what judo means. It might be and an, it might be an element of a future ideological path that judo could fall down into. Of like, no, everybody stay away from me. I'm dangerous and I'm, I, I, I've got to be able to do everything myself and that way I won't be able to be controlled or hurt or whatever. And that could be pretty dangerous for him psychologically. But in this circumstance, the idea that Taman and his people should rely on themselves as much as they can and avoid 
being dependent on people who are going to use and abuse them is pretty cool. Taman's revelation and fucking... Uh, I was the... I was the... I was the pine cone? I was the pine cone all along? No! Impossible! Me? Me? No! <laughs> fucking awesome. And so he goes off to explode their whole port, screaming at the top of his lungs, which probably didn't work, and probably some people fucking died. And then instead of taking all the cool-ass super weapons that they could either sell or use to protect themselves, or alright, whatever, they blew him up, and now it's back to, to peace on the island because... Because peace. It's a fucking sick scene of him him dolphining through the ways home. Ah, homies, I'm back! So, Judo and company have saved an island village and a little family. Which is super cool, but they're still gonna be under the oppressive thumb of Neo Zeon, who are in the process of effectively taking over the Earth. So this is cool. <laughs> I feel like... So first off, this was a cake episode where... Uh, what just happened? What just, it just passed through me. Tons of cool little ripples and reveals of what we're going to be able to expect moving forward. This does such a cool job of setting up some of the scene of what's really going down on Earth. How the people on Earth might feel about this war that's happening. Wow. This was a blast. Like that... Like that dude who turned around and found the double Zeta's double blaster in his face. <laughs> Yikes. That's an alarm clock. <laughs> what do we, we call that the Xeon alarm clock. <laughs> you never wake up. Um, goodness gracious. What fun. Uh, a ton of crazy water animation. Top tier production quality all the way through. And while it's, it's really short, it's just continuously amazing how we can introduce characters and a, cir a circumstance so quickly and resolve it so quickly and have it be resonant and powerful because this was pretty resonant and powerful moon moon took two episodes but at the same time we're like moon moon is anchored into my mind as like wow that was a really cool experience with pretty pretty unique and dope characters and now taman and the island uh, group and anu are like that was a pretty unique and cool and concise experience that was a thing how did they do that in 20 minutes with with war going on and like landing and uh, i guess they did it by cutting out how the fuck we got Pudu on board and a whole bunch of other shit and just skipping over stuff but it didn't feel like it was missing. It just felt like we were on the ride into the story. Gundam's cool. It's a weird show. It's a weird, wild ride. But it's pretty cool, and I'm enjoying it. We'll see what we do next as we're continuing our operations on Earth and presumably heading toward Dakar, where all of the enemy is gathered without any other instructions yet. So that seems like a bad idea. Maybe we'll be able to link up with Karaba and get some shit done. I don't know, it seems seems like we're on the the small side of this war, and definitely on the back foot, as they're already in process of taking over the planet. Where do we go from here? I don't know. But maybe we'll be able to save Hanu and Tamar and Taman and many, many other Earthnoids from a terribly oppressive regime brought from space Nazis. Although bow down before space cleopatra all praise thanks for watching this was a fun episode i'll see you next week for the next episode we'll see what the hell happens there should be a good time peace <laughs>